Okay. In the previous classes, we already have discussed that CBC value for the octahedral field is much greater than than in this case of tetrahedral, and it, the value is near about two by five times. Now, or four by nine times. Square planar complexes have also has a CBC value than octahedral. Now. If the system is D0 or D5 or D10 system, in D0 and uh, in the LSP or HSP, that means low spin and high spin, and D5 in the D5 in the high spin, with D10 high spin and low spin, all these values, four values actually, one, two, three, four, and five times, the CFC value becomes zero. And if the CFC value is zero, then it has or it have, they have no particular stereochemistry. If the CFC value that is crystal field splitting energy for D0, D5 and D10 in particular this type of system that is low spin, high spin in D0 system, only high spin in D5 system and only low spin and high spin both in D10 system, the value of CFC equal to 0. So they have no particular stereochemistry as this type of value depends on ligand ligand repulsion cation size that means size of the metal and the cation charge how many charge it carries with it plus 2 or plus 3 or plus 1 this type of charge now zinc 2 plus complexes with d10 system and we already know that zinc 2 plus ion contains d10 all the electrons are filled and also paired up this d10 system always prefers tetrahedral geometry and the bond angle is in the tetrahedral field is 109028 minute which creates minimum repulsion between ligand and ligand so G2, zinc 2 plus ion complex with d10 system always prefers tetrahedral geometry with minimum repulsion between ligand and ligand now if the central metal atom has higher cationic charge so the value of CFC increases that means crystal field splitting energy increases in presence of higher cationic charge which prefers octahedral complexes as in octahedral complexes del 0 that means octahedral CFC value is always greater than pairing energy which helps the electrons to get paired up which lowers the spin value that means if the unpaired electron decreases number of unpaired electron decreases so we get low spin complexes in octahedral geometry so is this clear if higher cationic charge in the metal is used for the formation of complexes it always prefers octahedral complexes where there is del o value is greater than pairing energy value which lowers the number of unpaired electrons as a result we get low spin complex in octahedral geometry is it clear again if in doubt you can uh, question us in message d5 ion now d5 ion with high spin or low spin in the high spin that is high value of pairing in the d5 system that like fe3 plus ion fe cl4 minus ion in complex where we get four weak field ligands like halide ion it forms tetrahedral complex but in presence of strong field ligand like cyanide it forms octahedral complex now the difference is that when we use weak field ligand like chlorine it forms tetrahedral complex where we use strong field ligand like cyanide it forms octahedral complexes in presence of strong field ligand the octahedral or tetrahedral or any gi type of geometry the cfc value increases which has greater than p value that is pair energy value which prefers octahedral geometry with low spin now in d6 system like octahedral geometry like fe2 plus 3 fe2 plus or co3 plus which lowers the value of p that means highest value of cfsc value for this type of ligand in this type of central metal sorry central metal so it has the highest cfc value that is 24 dq 
24 dq that is 2.4 del o so in this type of compounds or complexes we get the highest value of cfsc already we have calculated in the previous classes and in the complex like cof63 minus and we get this type of values now nickel 2 plus with d8 system always prefers octahedral geometry than tetrahedral tier system okay so in this scenario we have discussed that various preferable geometry by central metal ion now we are going to discuss about the stability of complexes now if one metal combine with one ligand it forms ml so the equilibrium constant k1 becomes concentration of ml by concentration of am into l that is concentration of product by concentration of reactants now if this ml again combine with another ligand forms ml2 then the k2 will be this if it combines with again a1 ligand it forms ml3 and the k3 will be thus this scenario if ml again and again occurring again and again then ml n minus 1 plus 1 ligand forms mln this mln is the product and these are the reactants so kn that is equilibrium constant for this reaction will be mln by ml minus 1 n minus 1 into ml ligand now if the total reactions occurs like this that is m plus nl formation of mln so equilibrium constant k will be equal to concentration of the product by concentration of the reactants like this now k if we multiply all the equilibrium constant like k1 k2 k3 k4 dot 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 kn we get the value of k now this summation is equal to the beta n now k1 k2 k3 a dot dot kn are the stepwise formation or stepwise stability constant for the formation of ultimate complex that is mln step by step occurs so it is stepwise formation constant we have already written that that these constant are known as stepwise formation or stability constant value normally with the ingoing process that is from ml to ml2 ml2 to ml3 ml3 to ml4 and last of all mln that we get different types of formation constant normally k1 has greater value than k2 than k3 then dot 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 last of all kn so the so value is decreases gradually okay normally this happens stability constant that is kn that is last this is kn kn equal to mln by mln minus 1 in 12 this is known as stability constant so instability constant will be equal to reciprocal of 1 kn that is 1 by kn this is known as instability constant value okay now in this scenario all the constant actually describes how the complex is stable or not and what is the amount of stability of the complexes okay now if we take three values that is formation of ml3 m plus 3l to ml3 if the summation or equilibrium constant is beta so beta will be equal to ml3 concentration of ml3 by concentration of am into concentration of l to the power q that is will equal to k1 into k2 into k3 k1 into k2 into k3 equal to beta now from this value from this value we are going to discuss about the stability of this complexes now we have already know that fe3 plus ion is more stable than fe2 plus ion if we keep if we keep some fecl2 salt 
for a long time in the atmospheric pressure normal atmospheric pressure and temperature it is known that all the fe2 ion fe2 plus ion converts into fe3 plus ion which is more stable as it is a d6 system and d5 system is more stable than d6 system that is half filled half filled electric configuration has more stability so fe3 plus ion is more stable than fe2 plus ion normally this happens but when it forms complex that is fe3 plus ion and fe2 plus ion fe3 plus ion is more stable but when fe2 plus ion forms complex it becomes stable that means fe2 plus ion is less stable but when it forms complex it becomes stable like this copper plus in aqueous state it is unstable it readily converts into copper aqueous and copper 2 plus aqueous that means copper plus is less stable in the aqueous solution but when it forms complex like this and this it becomes stable that means after the formation of complex the normal unstable ion forms stable complex unstable ion when forms complex it becomes stable okay now one more example of chelate complex chelation chelation occurs for those types of ligands which has density more than 2 2 or more than 2 density ligands ligands having density or donor atoms more than 2 or 2 forms chelation that means ring formation copper 2 plus ion when surrounded by 2 ethylene diamine forms a chelate compound becomes more stable so chelation chelation creates stability in the complex ion 